I'm Peter Block here in Chicago at the AHA annual meeting for On the Scene, and with me to my left is Kim Eagle, an old friend. Kim Eagle is from Michigan. And Kim, we're doing the day one wrap up. So these are the three trials that we'd like to discuss. I've got a little piece of paper here so I get it right. Good. Yeah, that's at our important. age, that's a good idea. That's right. So we're starting with Vital, Kim. Vital is this vitamin D and omega-3. You know, we've all been eating salmon forever, thinking yeah. this is good. And the Eskimos never get cardiovascular disease because they eat all this whale blubber. So tell me about Vital. Well, today's a big day for primary prevention at this meeting and secondary prevention. Vital is a study of 25,000 patients randomized to placebo or fish oil, a couple of grams a day. And there was absolutely no signal of benefit from this very large cohort. And I think this probably puts to rest the question of whether all people should be taking a supplement with fish oil. I mean, you know, for years, the farmers, not the, the non-pharmaceutical, the parapharmaceutical companies have been touting both of these as being the cure-all for cardiovascular disease. Can we finally throw this away? I think we can. The other half of this trial was vitamin D. Yeah. And that, too, showed absolutely no benefit in all comers. There may be certain patients that yeah. benefit from vitamin D, like people with osteopenia, osteoporosis. But for primary prevention of heart disease, it doesn't appear to have benefit. Okay, moving on. Enough, okay. Enough with vitamin D. Vital is out. Okay, there we go. So uh, we have reduced it as well, but let's leave that for the end and talk okay. about CIRT, C-I-R-T, low-dose methotrexate for prevention of atherosclerotic events. So this is sort of uh, Paul Ritker's stuff. The Cantos trial, as you remember, a year and a half ago, big time trial, interleukin-6 and the leukin-1-beta uh, reduction, which made a difference in cardiovascular yeah. outcomes, yeah. big time. And so this is a follow-up of Cantos. CERT now uses, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat here, right? It's, uh, oh, I don't have it down as exactly. It's methotrexate. It it's low-dose methotrexate, yeah. but I think it's only a low dose, yeah. at, like twice a week. Yeah, I think it's once a week. Okay, uh, once a week. Very small dose. There you go. And, and uh, that should be enough to affect inflammation. Well, but uh, in wait, this wait. trial... The question is, though, is, in, is all inflammation equal? That's what this question really... Uh, sort of asks. And this trial says no, it's not. Yeah, exactly. Right? This yeah. drug does not affect the same cytokines that were affected in Cantos, and there was no signal of benefit from methotrexate. So blasting inflammation with a drug s such as this one doesn't appear to have benefit. Exactly. And I think everyone's going to say, well, you know, this is a negative trial, but I don't think it's a negative trial at all. IL-6 and IL-1 beta and high sensitivity CRP were not affected by this trial, whereas That's in right. Cantos, all of those came down significantly. Exactly. So I think what the takeaway from this is, going forward, the basic scientists need to go really go back to biochemistry and say, okay, if we're going to do clinical trials, the basic scientists and the biochemists have to put together something that attacks these specific areas of inflammation. Yeah, so uh, we, we have to understand the mechanisms yeah. of plaque rupture. They're related to cytokines. We need to know those cytokines and what agents will suppress those, and hopefully in a safe manner. Yeah, just as an aside, you know, lately we've heard a lot more about flu and myocardial infarction. Right. So flu releases all these cytokines, and it produces probably some positive effect or negative effect on having a myocardial infarction right. or producing myocardial infarction, the cytokines that that releases must, in fact, be bad cytokines. IL-6, IL-1, yep. the same go. things that we saw in Cantos. And we know from studies in this country, if we vaccinate a whole town against influenza, the number of MIs drops by 50%. And this is not just stress. This is also the biochemical response of coronary plaques to these cytokines released by the virus. Yeah. So, interesting, this is uh, basic science uh, being sort of led into the clinical uh, arena, and we'll see what happens going forward. Yeah. Okay. So, let's go to the really blo blockbuster today, Reduce It. Uh, reduce It is cosepin ethyl is what you told me, but I'm going to tell you it's a purified ethyl ester of icosapentaenoic acid. How's that? That is a full that sandwich. Impressive? Yeah, that's, that's impressive. impressive. Okay, so the short version is cosepin ethyl EPA uh, was treated, uh, was given for patients that had hyperlipidemia, particularly hypertriglyceridemia, for right. which we really don't have very good yeah. therapy. All these patients were on statins. They were? So it's yours to take. So, well, half of them had, the, half of them had ASCVD, and the other half had diabetes. And they were treated for five years. 
four grams of this fish oil substance okay. and a major benefit, a 25% risk reduction overall. There was a reduction in cardiovascular death by an absolute risk of 1%, so one in 100 treated, you save a life. All-cause death also went down. Uh, there was a little bit of a signal increased risk of bleeding, maybe one out of 200 patients treated, a slight increased risk of AFib and A-flutter, one out of 200 patients. But this is a surprisingly positive trial. Yeah, and I think it's going to be probably, at least for today, the biggest trial of the day. I agree. The, the, the point here, of course, VITAL shows us that using fish oil in all comers probably has no benefit. Reduce it suggests that in a certain group of patients, high triglyceride, diabetics, or known coronary disease, they do get benefit, and we should treat them. There you go. So that's going to be the wrap-up for today. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Peter.